Hi Aquarius, it's me Stormy and here is your annual horoscope for 2020. We're going to do an overview of the big dates of events coming in 2020 so that you can see how they're going to affect or at least stimulate, maybe even disrupt a little bit of your life, but ultimately do everything it can cosmically to get you in alignment with being successful. So this is a very cool year for you. And speaking of how cool it's going to be for you, at the end of this year, we have Saturn officially moving into your energy and it's not everybody's favorite but this is ultimately an energy that will create a foundation for you to stand on and build success take your ambitions take your creativity and do something with them for the next 29 years so you are just in front of a beautifully big set of transitions that are coming for you that ultimately put you in a position to be successful. Now, we've also astrologically just got some big things happening this year. We start the year with Saturn and Pluto in conjunction. Throughout the year, Jupiter and Pluto will dance in conjunction with each other, and we are here for those. Like, these are our favorites. We love them. They are like getting an espresso shot that just ultimately turbocharges your growth. It's a really brilliant energy, so we'll see those three different times. Then at the end of the year, we've got the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn right there in your energy, bringing a turning point to your table, and we will talk all about that. We've also got six different eclipses happening this year. Many of them are going to be on the axes of Cancer and Capricorn, just like many of the events we saw in 2019. So you'll continue some healing, and you'll continue some letting go as we come here into 2020. So that'll be something to pay attention to. And then every planet that we have that can retrograde will retrograde this year. So let's jump in here and talk about the happenings of what's happening, okay? Like I said, as we start the year, January 10th, we've got a lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Cancer at 20 degrees. So that will light up your sixth house. But this is a continuation of a dance that you were doing in 2019 that really had to do with your daily routine. And I think Aquarius really had to do with mental health and wellness for you as well. And it could have definitely been physical health and wellness as well. If you felt like there were things happening in your career or your personal life and you were just not able to come to the other side of them, your body might have taken on a lot your mind might have taken on a lot. Um, anybody doing freelance work, this is going to bring a shift to this. But this is a shift as we come into 2020. The shift is here and available. This is your work for the next six months, right? You've seen some things in 2019. You are not coming in unprepared. So as we have this lunar eclipse that says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged or an adjustment needs to be made in the area of your sixth house, health and wellness, daily routines, um, your mental wellness, service to others, you're going to be able to make those adjustments here. Now, January 12th, we're going to have Saturn and Pluto in conjunction at 22 degrees of Capricorn. This will light up your 12th house because it's just a couple days away from that lunar eclipse. It also does give me the thought that where you're trying to evolve is in some way transitioning something out of your daily routine, transitioning something out of your thinking pattern. It's almost as if I really want to ask you with Saturn and Pluto here, um, what do you need to shed in order to advance forward? Where do you need to drop some baggage in order to be able to lift off and fly? This is really the question that's going to stir you for the next six months, I think. Because when Saturn and Pluto come together, these are the big hitters, right? Pluto is trying to help you die off. It's the Phoenix energy so that you can live as a different version. And Saturn is taking that different version to new heights. So here in the 12th house, this slow evolutionary process that's happening to you, first of all, it feels heavy. It can feel like a loss. It can feel like a hardship. So if you're feeling like there's something stressful or there's something hard happening and you just like you can't get control of it in some way, shape or form, that's your indicator that this is the thing to put down because where the loss, where the heavy, where the hardship feels like it's at, Saturn is trying to replace that with new opportunity and the universe doesn't leave a hole. So what baggage are you ready to put down in order to fly? Where are you fighting and it's not really in your best interest? Mercury is going to retrograde three different times this year, February, June, and October, and I will do smaller videos on those and cover those in the monthly videos as well. But you can look back at my 2019 Mercury retrograde in your element video because the retrogrades of this year are fairly similar. So you'll be able to take advantage of using that video to see how this will impact you as well, okay? 
March 22nd, Saturn, Big Daddy Saturn, moves into your sign. Now, this is just a preview. This is a short visit. It's just a snack, okay? But it's going to give you a preview of the things that you're going to work on. Now, you have spent the last year or two years really trying to clean out this spiritual closet, bad behaviors, bad beliefs. They've been rising to the surface. You've been transitioning some beliefs, actions, and attitudes out of your life, getting ready for Saturn to come here and shift you. When Saturn comes into your sign, heart, soul, mind, body, being, action, you get a shift and it is about leveling you up. These problems that you've been having over these last five years that you felt like you just couldn't get the answer to or you were unsure, maybe there was an element of confusion, maybe even what it felt like for you Aquarius is it was right there and you could taste it but you're like, how come I can't get to it? Saturn comes in here and yes, he comes in as a heavy energy where you feel like you're taking on a lot of obligation. All of a sudden, you are busy because Saturn comes and says, Aquarius, I'm here to help you, but you've got to grow up. You have got to mature in the area of you, your identity, what makes you you. And this is going to be your sneak peek, your preview of what's to come until 2023. Saturn will be in your house in Aquarius until July of this year. Then he's going to retrograde and then we won't see him again until December. But from March to July, Look at how you're being reshaped. Look at how you're being tested. Look at how this Saturn energy coming in here is putting you in a position to figure out which one of those bags you're willing to put down at the door because you can't travel with all that crap anymore, right? This is ultimately about cleaning out a lot of space that you can't see, you can only feel, you can only watch the weird behaviors come out so that you can advance. Right, So this is really a beautiful energy to be happening for you. May 13th to June 25th, we've got Venus retrograding in the energy of Gemini. This is going to light up your fifth house. Now, first of all, during a Venus retrograde, one of the things that we suggest is if an old romance wants to come back, that's fine. You maybe interact with it, but don't start anything new. New relationships that come to the table, sometimes you get to the other side of a Venus retrograde and it's just not what you thought it was. And typically what happens is it's not what you thought it was and you have spent money or or you have put value, you have put effort into it that very much so feels lost. So it's just a precaution. We also suggest that you not make any huge investments financially or anything like that for the exact same reasons. Now, if you need to, you feel compelled to, you do you, right? I am not God, so you do what you need to do, Aquarius, okay? But with Venus retrograde here in the fifth house, in the energy of Gemini, this is very social and it's in the fifth house. So one of the questions I would ask you is, are you having fun? right? Venus is about pleasure. She's delicious. She's harmony. She's diplomacy. She's beauty. Are you having fun in your life, Aquarius? And if you are not, this is your time to review that in your daily routines that have been given the information at the beginning of the year that they need review, right? They need change. If having fun, having joy, playing in your life is not a thing. This is your opportunity to look back and to raise the volume on that. This could also be, like I said, a past lover coming back, but this could also be things that have to do with children or I would even think just in this particular case, maybe a family member or like like an in-law, some someone who has connection to maybe someone you're romantically connected to, they need money, they need help, they need service from you in some way, shape, or form. So you could certainly be going back during this Venus retrograde and redoing things in some way, shape, or form. And it's Venus. It's Venus, and that's a very creative, beautiful energy. Is there a past beauty, a past skill, a past talent that you've had stashed back there and you haven't been bringing it forward, this may be the time that you choose to do that. Now, this is an important set of information, an important set of energy that are happening here at this Venus retrograde. So make note of what's shifting for you because we're going to see the adjustments to that as we get closer to the end of the year. Now, June 5th, we've got a lunar eclipse in the energy of Sagittarius. This is going to be at 15 degrees. So this is lighting up your 11th house. Now, this is happening during this Venus retrograde. Is there a grouping, a social grouping, a grouping of people who have a certain belief or something like that that you've been feeling disconnected from and that's why you're feeling like you don't have joy? Community creates joy for us. Is there a community that you're still connected to and they're making you crazy and it's time for you to put that down? This is an energy at this lunar eclipse in Sagittarius to expand this area of your life, the 11th house, friends, 
social groupings, um, organizations, your ambitions, your long-range plans. This lunar eclipse says, let's end something, let's acknowledge something, let's make an adjustment here, but it's set to the tune of this Venus retrograde. So I think the theme of joy and children will still be on the table to help guide what needs adjusting at this time. June 21st, we've got a solar eclipse in the energy of Cancer right at zero degrees. So again, this sixth house energy, we see it at play. Then on July 5th, we've got a lunar eclipse happening at 13 degrees of Capricorn, 12th house. And this is the last dance we're going to see here of this Cancer Capricorn axis. 6th and 12th houses. It's going to be time to move on after this. But this energy that's happening here, remember you saw it in 2019, you've got fresh beginnings here. You have done the work right? These are your fresh starts and your fresh beginnings in this area. This is new thinking, healthy thinking. This is new health, new wellness, new daily routines that feel more spiritually fit, that feel more vibrant and creative, right? Anything that's been hidden, it's likely been admitted to the surface already and you're able to see it and kind of detox what doesn't belong at this particular point. And your health and wellness, your spiritual fitness will guide the rest of your year. So having your spiritual tank filled up with good fuel is going to help you get a lot done, especially as you move into Saturn, really getting to work on you to help you come to the next level. September 9th through November 11th, we've got Mars retrograding in the energy of Aries. This will light up your third house. Now, during a Mars retrograde, we suggest that people um, avoid elective surgery because Mars and Aries are over war and cutting. So your surgeon and the actual act of your surgery, the cutting, would fall under this, right? If it's a procedure that you're redoing and you had already done before or you're making a correction to that, that's fine, but something new if it's elective, we suggest that you avoid doing that if you can. Now, Mars is not entirely uncomfortable in this retrograde because he's in the energy of Aries, which he naturally rules. So it's not an entirely uncomfortable retrograde for this energy. Aries is a fire energy. You're an air energy. You can respond very, very well during this retrograde. But what you're going to be looking at is Mars, what he's about, your actions, how you're moving things, how you're getting things done, where you need to be taking more actions, your desires, and this is going to sit in your third house, communications, your thinking, your mind. It's almost like you have spent the last two years really having to unlearn some things so that you can make space to relearn some things, most specifically about you and how gangster you get to be, how confident that you can be, right? How much you have to offer. So here in this third house, Mars is going to say, how are you communicating with people? What does that resume look like? What does that website look like, right? What does that book look like? Are you taking action on that in your networking? People that you're networking with, are you trying to network with people who make you feel good? Or are you trying to network with people who can help you walk forward? Mars will also ask you in terms of your communication, your siblings, your ideas, old maybe ideas that you have about who you should be and how you should be if you're fighting the right fight. Right? Are you putting your energy into something that is going to have profit and return for you? Or are you fighting a fight that is just you running around in your head? Right? So with all this 612th house work that you'll be doing coming into 2020, this area will be helped. And I do want to say this too. Because Mars is here, if there's a contract or something that you have to go back over, it may end or it may have conflict with it. I would tell you, don't be the one to start the conflict. Usually the person who starts a conflict or a legal battle or something like that during a Mars retrograde is the one who loses it. So to the best of your ability, look at this area. Let's see what your third house needs your attention, okay? November 30th, we've got a lunar eclipse happening at 8 degrees of Gemini, so 5th house area. December 14th, we've got a solar eclipse in Sagittarius at 23 degrees. This is your 11th house. This is new romance coming to you if you're open to that, new beginnings for your children, or maybe a new business idea that you've got going on. That Venus retrograde that happened, this is where you will connect those dots. 
What did you find? Did you find joy? Did you find pleasure? Because these are going to start to come alive here and there's opportunities based on getting in alignment with that energy. Is this new connections to social groupings? Because you've got to be social. You're a thinker. You're a talker. You're an air energy. You're a mover. You need as much social as is available and intellectual stimulation. Is this about technology for you and changing your beliefs about how you can interact with that technology and things like that? It's a very expansive set of new beginnings in your fifth house and in your 11th house. So certainly you can have some new love, which could be a person. It could also be a business or it could be something for your children coming to your table. And you've got new connections to organizations that can help you further yourself and where you'd like to go at this point. December 17th, Saturn moves back into your sign and it's here for the long haul until 2023, okay? This is Saturn working on you, taking you to the next level. This is your chance, Aquarius, to rise. You will mature. You will grow up with this energy, and some of it will feel very responsible, but also it will feel like responsibility and discipline create freedom for you, especially around some issues I think you've been feeling stuck on for quite some time. On December 20th, we've got Jupiter moving into Aquarius. Now you have an opportunity for expansion here along with this. You see what I mean? Saturn's not just coming to like whack you down or bring you hardship. It's a combination here that's expanding you. And then on the 21st, as these two come together, Jupiter and Saturn in the Great Conjunction, this is your turning point. This is a turning point for you, and I would ask you to look back to 2012 to 2015. What was the big significant thing that was changing in your life? You weren't ready to step into it yet. You were not ready. When Uranus and Pluto were dancing, changes were happening in that global sphere. Changes were happening within you. You were getting new actions, ideas, and beliefs. Your belief structure, your vibe literally changed, but you weren't ready to stand on that yet. This is your turning point because here, now you've got 29 years to be able to stand on the actions that that catalyst produced for you. Globally, what we're going to see with Saturn and Jupiter together, these are the rulers of the age. We're moving into the age of Aquarius. Your expansion is eminent here, right? They are over politics, religion, economy, all of these things. So as Jupiter and Saturn come together, it's structure meets wisdom. We will have things become done so differently than what we've been doing now globally. Things will have to change to more of a socialistic type and you'll be able to find your place within that. So lots coming in 2020. I do not think it's the easiest year, but I also think it's a year that you're walking in quite a bit more confident than maybe you have in a year or two. And ultimately, your success is getting ready to be guaranteed because the work that you've already done has prepared you for what you're about to walk through. So don't doubt yourself. Instead, let's celebrate, put a little fun into your life, Aquarius. And I can't wait to walk with you every month and every week to see what 2020 has got to offer for you, okay? But remember, this year, the wisdom of your year will lie in being patient and really accepting responsibility for yourself, for your life, for your world, for your thoughts, and for your actions, okay? All right, Aquarius, I love you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.